<laughs> Welcome back guys, we're starting another loadout video 2021 and uh, we're excited to bring you some new gear, some old gear, what we got going on this year. Rocky's coughing up his hair balls. This for instance is a new wing Thomas both just bought this year. It's the Mo Marsh Invisiman. I'm excited to try it out. We've tried other mobile blinds before. They're good in some areas, some sometimes they're more of an inconvenience. I think we have some good spots to use these this year. I know Tice has had a Rocky's dog stand, which is the same brand, Mo Marsh, and he says it's his favorite uh, dog stand. So this basically uses the same exact platform and, and frame and feet and everything like that. You guys know probably about this product. It's not new for this year, but it's new for us. It's comfortable to sit in. You probably won't want to take this on like a two mile hike or something like that. But I think it's 25 pounds. Yeah, 20. And when you get some grass on here, it's gonna add a little more weight. But if you if you have some areas that you could walk in, maybe under a mile or up to a mile, these these would probably be killer. So I can't wait to try these out. And then of course Rocky's dog stands, the Invisalab, and uh, also the gear this year is the dog himself. Get yourself a black lab. Black labs are the best. So on my duck call lanyard, it's th this is just a loadout video. Like everything we have and use is just real quick. I'm not gonna spend too much time, but we got got the finisher, the Acme uh, Widgeon whistle, <whistles> got my dog whistle, and then I got my JJ Lairs hybrid. And this is this one has a 350. I also have another one. I'll show you in a second. It has a 360 in it, just to give a different sound. And I also have a T1. I think that has a 370 in it. So, but if you've never if you're looking for a call, a high quality call, I'm telling you these are the by far the best sounding duckiest calls on the market. So for the Invisimount on the Mo Marsh, we also got the uh, the Mo Marsh Invisigrass. It's not that we had to get this. I know plenty of companies make this stuff, but for where we're at, I end up getting the natural, and then I got one small box of olive. But we're gonna brush these up. I'm gonna brush these up later. But like Thomas said. I almost like that color, Thomas. Like mm -hmm. that almost seems like I should have got all that That's instead of the, the natural. But natural color is pretty yellow. But with, a lot of our stuff is like dead grass, anyways. That's kind of pretty bright, but I think it will match okay. So that steam is grass. That's new this year. This is the Rigam Right. I've opened this before. Before I guess I'll show you again. It's really quick. It's kind of one of my favorite uh, ground blinds. Literally just open, snap this, and you're done. And Rocky is a big dog, but he even fits in there just fine. He sticks out a little in the back or front, depending on where he's at, but I bet you this isn't, but five, six pounds. It's kind of like an accordion. Just go back down and three clips and you're done. It's really quick. I like it a lot. Avery, Marsh seat. Hey, come here, sit. Got the Avery Marsh seat. Um, we use these all the time because a lot of times when we're hunting places that aren't pits or specific blinds or we're not going to hunt on the boat, this is just something we've used for years and years and then you just pop it up and you can adjust the height and these catch it in the mud so it don't just keep sinking one of the blind bags i have a few like i have some that are for light weight purposes to pack in if you haven't seen that video you should check it out it's uh the mobile uh, duck hunting gear it's kind of two setups one of those setups i showed in that is like a super uh light setup and that kind of comes from thomas's idea with a um dry bag and i'll show you that here in a second but just the rig and right Nothing special, just you can use any type of blind bag, but that's the one I've been using lately. This is the Final Approach Goose Floaters. I just bought a six pack of these because uh, there's some places up north that we want to kind of have these in the spread. Just I feel like it would draw the ducks in. You know, ducks will come into geese, but geese don't really necessarily always come into ducks. It just depends, but I think that will help. <laughs> this is the another JJ Lairs hybrid with a 360 in it. What's nice, guys, about these, just real quick, is they are pre-cut reeds. They're dog-eared already, it's a machine, it can't go wrong, and you can just change it, get different sizes instead of sitting there trying to do it yourself, but that's a, a JJ Lairs hybrid in the jade color. I love that color, but I don't know how much that'll be going with me to the marsh. And like, for instance, because this is new, I kind of have an addiction with these calls. You All these pre-cut with the numbers written on them, so you can go like 335, 340, 345, 350, you know, so. Now, this year, uh, on my 20 gauge, I got the Brocky Affinity. And I don't think I said this in the last year's uh, loadout video, but it's the Franky Affinity 3 Elite. But this has the True Lock choke in it, and right now I have the Long Range. Honestly, this throws a really good pattern. And on top of that, the bead, like if you can see the yellow and the orange, I ended up putting that on my A5 just because I liked it so much. And 
and it doesn't distract from the bird, but I really like this 20 gauge. And for this gun, this is, I've shot heavy hammer out of this, but mainly I shoot heavy bismuth out of it, and it's just a deadly combo. Like, I feel like I'm shooting a 12 gauge when I'm shooting that 20 gauge with this ammo. So it's a three inch, three inch six shot, and I've knocked everything from, uh, I don't really take these on till hunts. I try not to take this on till hunts, trust me. I'll just use still. But like, if I do know I'm going specifically for mallards or I'm gonna be shooting honkers, same ammo for all of them. It's my Browning A5, Old Faithful. I've had her for, I think, seven years now with the old shot cam on there. Try to get you guys some good footage of that shot cam. And then here is the bead. See how I put that same bead and it just a stick on and it just helped me because my gun always shoots a little bit uh, high. I put that on, which is a fatter, bigger bead, which causes me to lower my point of aim and just it's money. New this year, I, I still am a kicks guy and I did a pattern video on that. You can check that out when I compared kicks versus pattern master. This is the pattern master code black duck and it throws a serious type pattern. You guys know I like full chokes, whether they're 10 yards or 40 yards. But um, it throws, honestly, with all these ammos, it throws a nasty pattern. So, but that means you might be missing more, and that's okay. I'd rather knock them down or miss them and not wound them. With that, I shoot all three of these. This depends. There's no specific reason. I shoot the heavy metal, three inch, four shot. That's what I always stick with. And I shoot the six shot. And then I'll do, shoot the heavy bismuth, three inch, six shot. And you guys don't know how ammo is this year. With everything that's been going on, so you kind of just take what you can get, um, which... Again, I'll shoot heavy steel, heavy metal, even heavy till. I like heavy till too, it's just steel. New this year, three inch, six shot, one and a quarter ounce. This is that heavy 12, and I've done some videos on it. I'm not gonna go in detail, but stuff's nasty. It's uh, 12 grams per cubic centimeter, so it's heavier than lead, actually. And it just throws a gnarly, gnarly pattern. My prayer rug, can't go wrong. I get, you know how many times people borrow this when they hunt with me? They don't wanna get their little feetsies wet, or they don't wanna stand on the rocks. This thing is like one of my most important pieces of gear, I think. Also, the motion ducks. This is a jerk string. I just like it better than a regular traditional jerk string because it goes in a circle and uh, you set these out. It takes like 30 seconds to set it up and that you have a weight and a string. I don't have it out with me right now. Shovelers. <laughs> these are the final approach shovelers. And I will say these are the prettiest shovelers on the market for sure. If you like shovelers, if you want that pop in your spread, by far final approach makes the best and they sell it in a six pack of drinks i have the refuge runner it's the rig and right refuge runner you can put a spinner right here you can put the poles right here and then it's got a spot for your gun with backpack straps and you can throw in your decoys and go on that back uh, and we did it tommy and thomas do that quite a bit if you can't push stuff in you can't take a car and all that throw your stuff in here usually we'll throw like six to a dozen in a piece because we're going to small water and then inside this we have the the final approach flocked head mallards and they are quality they're the eva kind of that soft plastic they're not going to cling around there they're not going to lose paint i mean these hold paint gets through i bought decoys the day you bring them out of the box and scratch them like this literally paint's coming right off so good colors i've already hunted with them and they look amazing this was thomas's genius idea this is a dry bag this is a 30 liter if i had it to do over again i'd buy a 40 liter it's got backpack straps you can get these on amazon for like 30 40 bucks they're cheap I went to go buy the 40 liter in there, sold out. But we throw like just minimalist gear in there for when we're really gonna go in somewhere tough and far. Throw it in here, you roll it up, you buckle it, and then when you get to your spot, whatever you have in there, valuables, you can throw it in the toys or in the water and it's not gonna get water in it. I'm telling you, this it's the way to go if you really can get by with a couple decoys. And there are some spots where we can do that. Both of us use that all the time. Mountain Dews, I bought about, Six cases of this ready for season, just to get us through the first couple months. Don't ever leave home without it. This is my my waiter bag. I used to think these were stupid, honestly. I don't know why, I just did. But you start paying a lot of extra money for your waiters and you want them to last, whether they're cheap or expensive, and you'll get yourself a blind bag. Cub Waterfowl uh, sent me this uh, last year, beginning of last year, before last season started. I love this bag. Got my sweet Sitka waiters in here. Still holding strong, guys. Still no leaks, uh, knock on wood. I mean, there might be this year, but they got the fast patch kit, just like any other brand does. But the boots, guys, the boots are the key to this whole setup. Some, you can literally hike for miles in these. If you do that with some boots, you'll literally be just raw on your shins, like Caleb said, lacerated shins, and your heels just hurt. Like, you don't have that with these. The other good thing about this waiter bag, 
you can go check them out. The website Cup Waterfowl is with this fly mat comes a little pad that you can pull out of here. You could stand on it to change. So I just think that's pretty cool. Put some extra dry clothes in their socks or whatever. You know. Got my blind bag. I like using the leather straps. I really think that's cool putting your birds on it. Got my patch kit just in case something happens. It's got zip, zipper lubricant and then Aquasil for leaks and the patch kit. Thomas got me this a couple years, two, three years ago, probably three years ago now, but a night core flashlight. It's the best headlamp I've ever used. Super bright. Rocky's Sport Dog e collar I use. And then some gloves in here. It's not really a blind bag review, but just kind of some of the stuff I got in there. Some shells, license, all that good stuff. All right, guys, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to start with my calls. Uh, first off, I got them all on a Quack Lanyards uh, lanyard right here. It's a local friend of ours. He makes lanyards um, as a side business, and they're just quality product. This right here is actually supposed to match like the Timber a Sitka Optifade pattern. I got my JJ Lairs Hybrid. I run a uh, 3.55 on this. I got a Polk little teal whistle. It's a little wood call. It's really really nice. Has a good sound. This is a uh, pintail whistle. I got both of these calls right here from Billy John Quinto um, a couple years ago. Um, you can find these. Some other companies make them too. I love the sound of these. To me they sound a lot sharper than some other calls. Probably because they're metal. But they have a, a great sound. We got another FA bag here large mouth bag mesh bag water can drain out the bottom these bags are great for just putting a large amount of decoys in right now we have the mallards in here also got a pulsator right here these are great because you don't have to pull them like a jerk string the battery lasts all day and they provide consistent good motion on the water they're quiet that's another thing that i like a lot about them they're a lot more quiet than like a swimmer decoy um, they don't get tangled like a swimmer they just look good on the water. So, so far, I've really liked these a lot. I've had them for three years, so that's still pretty good. Life, life expectancy for a decoy like this that has battery in it, that you're using every time, banging up. So, that's pretty impressive to me. I'll go over this cart right here. This is actually Titus's cart. I have the exact same setup, so I didn't bring mine over. Um, the only difference with mine is my sled is actually the next size down. Uh, this size right here, we actually use both of ours quite a bit because this size right here is nice when we go together and we have all of our stuff in here and we're going to take, you know, everything. We're going to take a lot of decoys. We got our guns. We got Rocky stand. Like if we were going to take these Invisimans, this would be the best sled to use because it's got plenty of room. And this is a Rogers cart, which I believe has like 600 pound capacity. Not that we would ever use that with duck gear but it's just solid like a rock and it's got nice straps to tie stuff down with. Mine is better if we're gonna go light or if I'm going by myself or you know maybe we don't have the Invisiman, something like that. That's, that's basically how we make our decisions. We also got our teal out here, guys. These just look amazing to me. I like, the paint job is very good on, on the blue wings and the green wing, wings. Especially the blue wings to me. I like, I like they put a little bit of purple right there on their head. And the speckling looks good and overall they're just good decoys you can tell the difference between good decoy and not the widgeon i think they're probably my favorite uh decoy that final approach came out with this year i mean i just think they're the best widgeon on um, on the market i have a couple different brands um i have avians and to me i like this uh, color scheme better i like the head better the speckling and they're actually a, a good size widgeon decoy these are definitely better than my avians, or bigger than my avians, excuse me. I think the head positioning is a lot better too. One thing Titus didn't mention on the rigs for our decoys, these are new by Final Approach this year. They're the coated steel cable rigs, and in my opinion, these are the only way to go. They don't keep memory, and they're a Texas rig style, which I prefer. You know, the weight on these slides, which is nice, they're kind of self-adjusting. They got nice swivels, good steel cable. I mean, these will last. Forever. Another thing that we got this year, which isn't new, it's just every so often you gotta rebuy the same things. We got a Lucky Duck HDI spinner. Comes with a remote and um, a timer, you know, a timer where these will come on and off and you don't have to do it by hand. I got my Avery seat, just like Titus. Um, these are pretty common. They last forever, thankfully. Uh, they're light. They're the best thing that we can use around here for our marshes or refuges. 
Here's my blind bag. I've had this for several years. You've seen this in our other loadout videos. It's a rig and right. Um, this is kind of the one that I use towards the end of season because it's bigger and it's actually big enough that I can stuff a coat in here, like my, my Sitka Delta wading jacket or maybe a sweatshirt. If I'm going light, I usually don't take this bag just because it, it is a good size, but it's nice like if you're on a boat or if you got a sled and you can keep this in your sled. It's nice because I can have everything I really want in here. Just a couple basics, face paint, license. I got a set of earplugs this year. I'm gonna really try to do my best to wear those. I know in the past we don't always do a good job on that, but it's definitely worth it to keep your hearing. These right here are the, the Sitka uh, call lanyards that come with, I think it's the Delta wading jacket. Some guys don't like these. I've heard guys that do. Last year, one thing I did that I know I'm gonna do this year again these right here not only will work on your like delta wading jacket but they actually work on your waders themselves i just found myself using these a lot because i would put my calls in the pocket of my wader and whenever i went hunting i always knew i had my calls and then i would just pull them out and you can slide this right onto your wader instead of having to use a jacket i really liked it it was really convenient i'm probably going to do it again this year uh shell belt i've always used this off and on i use it a lot it's nice if you do have a good hunt and you have some fast action and you need to pull shells out quickly. Out of the boat, I probably won't use it, but I use it like out of the marsh. Shells, ties already went over. Heavy metal, can't beat it. Heavy 12, I'm excited to try this just this year. Another thing I'm excited about, I'm extremely excited about using this, really. These are Leopold uh, glasses. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, started coming out with um, glasses. I wanted to get some, just never have. I personally like hunting with glasses in a lot of situations because windy days, sunny days, you're always looking for birds, your eyes are always straining, it's windy, get bloodshot, whatever. It's nice to have glasses on. Um, these right here are what I'll be hunting with this year. These are the packouts. Smoke lens, all black. You know, I didn't really want something too shiny for hunting. So a lot of guys complain about using glasses, thinking it'll flare birds and stuff like that, but. I don't really think so. I've, I've used glasses before and it, it don't seem to hurt nothing. I, I also got another pair. These are the Bacnaras. These are more like a lifestyle type glasses. They're sick. I love them. I wore these. I just came back from Wyoming on a deer hunt and I wore them the whole way there and back and they're just, they're just money. Little mug, Yeti mug for something hot if you want to if it's cold. Like again guys, this is more like late season stuff. Early season, it's so hot here usually just drinking a can of Mountain Dew or water or something like that. Got my waiter bag here. I've had this forever. Actually, this was given to me by my old boss. I definitely do use this for my waiters. I got sick of waiters, waiters so I try to keep them somewhat nice. This is going to be the second year in these. I was very impressed with these last year. I mean, they've only been through one year, but I know for a fact that last year was probably the hardest I've put any pair of waiters through, but no holes, no leaks. Love them. They're very comfortable. We'll give you guys an update on year two to make sure that they're still holding strong. This is something we didn't, we haven't put in our pack out videos before or load out videos before. Um, set of binoculars. We can It just kind of goes without saying. If you're going to do any scouting, you need a set of binoculars. I mean, you can see birds with your eyes, but it's just another tool to be that much better. These right here are uh, Maven binoculars. I believe the model is B1. I got these mainly for um, the deer hunt that I just went on, but love them. They're extremely clear. Case is marsupial gear, just in case you guys are looking for one. Also got a range finder in there too, but. Got my um, Browning A5 in here. This is a Rig'em Wright case I've had for I think like three years now. One thing I said before, it's kind of bummed out when I first bought this, the strap broke. The metal that they use on these rings is kind of cheap. It's a cool pattern and it's kept my gun from getting too dirty. Ah, there she is right there. Wicked Wings, A5. This gun, can't say enough about it. I 100% I sh shoot better with this gun than I did with my other gun. I feel like I shoulder it better. It's lighter, it's smooth. I've never had any issues with it. It's got some heavy use. You can see right here, some of the paint's starting to wear off a little bit, but I mean, we put these, these guns through abuse so i got a final approach sling i don't really like to shoot with one but there's a lot of times where it's nicer to be hands-free with your gun because there's nowhere to set it down i have a kicks choke in here right now i actually didn't use this very much i it, this is an extra full 
I think it was just a little too tight. I did use it on a couple hunts and actually smoked birds with it, but I ended up switching to my factory full and I shot that all year last year. We're gonna have a pattern video come out soon. I'm gonna shoot my full choke, a pattern master, and a kicks choke to see which, which pattern shoots best. So be on the lookout for that if you guys are curious. I never patterned my factory full choke last year, but I feel like I shot good with it. So I left it in all year, but I'm curious to see what the pattern looks like. Another thing we haven't done in our loadout videos is Sitka. I know we've talked about them a lot. Maybe some of you guys are sick of hearing about it. I'm gonna go through it real quick. Early season around here, it's really hot. What I, all I got on is this core lightweight hoodie. It's paper thin. We've talked about it a lot. You guys know about it. What I wear on the bottoms, I got a pair of Under Armour. This is their cool gear. Essentially, it's for hot weather, whatever. It's You actually feel cooler than if you didn't have anything on. The air that moves throughout this, somehow it just, it just cools you down. So I actually got these last year, and I love them for early season. Mid-season, I'll move on to the gradient as a second layer. This was actually a gradient hoodie. I ended up cutting the hood off. You guys probably think I'm crazy for cutting Sitka, but I just didn't care for it. They do sell a gradient jacket, which is essentially what this is now. Love it, I love it. What I'd move to on the bottoms, like mid-season when it gets a little colder, is the core heavyweight bottoms. These are surprisingly warm. They're pretty thin, they're very warm. So I don't wear these on early season. Moving on to like the late season, I'll probably move on to like a duck oven. I love this jacket. It's very, very, very comfortable. It's a full zip, not a quarter zip like the gradient. If it's really cold, I'll move on to the gradient bottoms. But guys, it's gotta be cold for that. Like it's gotta be like like zero. <laughs> like those are so warm. 15 degrees are yeah, colder. Yeah, 15, probably 10 degrees are colder before I put those on because they're just so warm. As most of you guys know, if you watch the channel, we got this year, we got the Gator Tail Extreme Series 1754. And do you remember what the camo was? I can't remember now. I think it's natural gear. Natural gear, that's what it is. Like again, this is not a review video, guys. You can check out reviews. We have a review video of this, but we got the Hydro Turf, got the gun box. I'm, I've already hunted out of it and it's slick. I mean, just everything works like money. Lights on the front. On this, we did, and we haven't done a review of it. I don't think we will. We'll probably just show it in a hunt, but this is the Avery Quick Blind, Quick Set Blind, and it is not quick <laughs> to put together. I think we probably had seven hours in it probably putting it together but it's customizable because every boat there's a cat and that's what I like about it but once it's set up and done it's very very nice like now I'm glad I'm glad we did it so underneath of this is the actual material and then you can brush it up and all that stuff this is actually the wind brake that comes with it but we decided we didn't really want to use it so for traveling purposes and this was our, my friend Kevin's idea is wrap something around the actual blind material so it doesn't get torn up when you're driving because it just stays on so i used that windbreak wrapped it around and then used these bungee balls like you know one every like foot or two to like keep it and i'm telling you it, i'm glad i did it because it, it already tore some of this up like it's just the wind thomas knows i have to brag on this thomas is the macgyver of the family he always comes up with these good inventions and i'm always jealous and everything but i end up buying a brand new 50 quart rogers because i was like we want to keep plenty of room in the boat right like i don't want you know multiple ice chests and a, two chairs and like even if it's just me and thomas i don't want that so i thought how can i do it where i do it once so i was like you know what i'm gonna make me a slick setup so i you guys would think i'm crazy i drilled into a brand new ice chest thomas is nervous too but actually i really like this we got back and three days later it's still had ice in it but this is an atwood seat mount that i bought on amazon and what i did is i drilled through this with some five inch machine screws because they needed to go flush and then on the bottom go from a big washer to smaller then i use a lock nut you can maybe be a little bit careful for these not to puncture stuff but we had no problems like i said i already went on a trip and it was no problems but it seals really good and what i do is i bought this avery seat on amazon and i attached this three degree seat mount and i literally just and it's locked just fit up, sit all fat and sassy on this thing. I hope thing. you fall over in that thing. Hey, I did. I we had it out because <laughs> look, the thoughts are it's it can spin all the way in 360. Yeah. And it's a, okay. It would be a little bit this way, which in that, I never had an issue. I was leaning back with my feet up in the in the boat. But if you do it long ways, if you're really concerned about tipping over, like Tom's is saying, you ain't going to tip it over. Mm -hmm. You'll rip the screws out of this thing before you do that. So looks pretty sweet. You're pretty Yeah, I'm pretty. I'll have to try it out a couple times. You might build one. We'll see. And then Thomas has got his Pelican. Is that just, what you mean? Just regular old boring Pelican. Yeah, that cost way more than that one, I guarantee. 
Is this what you're gonna sit on? Yeah. Okay. And that's gonna wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed this loadout video. If you guys have any questions or anything, just comment down below and we can. Or any ideas of some gear we yeah. missed or something like that. Let yeah. us know. Duck season's here. Let's get it Let's on. Let's go.